Thank you. So first of all, everyone, do not be scared. We're musicians, but we're here also to talk about something that we can all relate to, hopefully. Something that has to do with relative emulation. Do you have an idol or someone who's an inspiration to you? Yeah, yeah we all do. It's part of being a human being and growing up and learning something, etc. For instance, you can idolize Steve Jobs as many people undeniably do. And if you go to Quora.com, you'll see a thread saying, why do so many people kiss up to and idolize Steve Jobs? Also, you can idolize Albert Einstein. I know that a lot of science geeks do. <laughs> Everything to do with uh, time and space. It's, yeah, amazing. Um, we idolize Charlie Parker, also known as Bird. And this probably seems quite strange considering the work that we do because Charlie Parker was a leading figure in the development of bebop. And bebop was created in the 1940s. Now, bebop was the first type of modern style of jazz because it was far more complex. They were playing at faster tempos, they were doing more complex soloing, and it all resulted in a much more intricate way of playing. Charlie Parker is our idol because he pushed the boundaries in jazz. For him, it was all about unexplored pathways within the elements of rhythm, harmony, and most of all, improvisation. Now, back to today. Um, there's no doubt there are new frontiers in the realm of the digital and cross-medium art. Jam, for instance, calls himself a visual musician, and that's because he can control image. He can control sound. <laughs> He can control image and sound, and he can control lights. <laughs> yeah, so let me tell you a little bit more about what I do and what is the idea behind it. So instead of just playing something uh, and a band playing on stage and you playing a video and it's all super random and no one gets it, I try to actually understand a little bit better the culture and the biological aspect of how we relate images to sounds. And it's pretty easy to understand that there's a correlation there. For example, in terms of height, you can look at something and say it's tall. And in terms of uh, music or sound, you can also look at something and say, oh, it's a high pitch. Even the, the way we express ourselves, say a high pitch or a low pitch. And therefore, you, you can have uh, situations where uh, it's, it's easy to understand that that happens. So when we perform, we have particular sounds and image that he matches and he thinks about how he can correlate the particular undulation of an image to a particular sound. Um, so we're going to play a song now, it's called One Body and Soul, and we're going to use this type of um, correlation and we're going to use lights as well, and you're going to get a little sense of what we do. We generally perform with a band, today we're going to show you a little bit more in detail what Jam does and what I do in particular with my loop station.
So that's a little bit about what we do. Um, so with the lights, the lights can be, uh, they, they can act as an artistic um, prop on stage, of course. And um, we can also use them con to conduct musicians. So when we play live jam, we'll um, generally fit them into our um, set list as a conductor. Today, let's do something very, very quick. Um, and just so you understand how these lights can, and can, can work. So people on this side, this light, when it turns on, could you please say, hey, all right, and people on that side, when that light turns on, can you please say jam? And our people in the middle, when you see these two lights turn on, can you please say stop? All right, now the lights will take you away. So we have a little fun on stage. We do collective improvisations with, with these lights and Jam uses them to conduct that. So I'll show you a few of effects, effects that I use live. Yeah, this effect is like filtering frequencies. So Melissa is filtering some frequencies right now. That's why you can hear some subtle differences. This one? I can also talk like a man. Yeah. If I feel that it gives me more power. Yeah. So basically, in this one, Melissa is completely shifting the pitch and putting it two octaves lower. And this is like an harmonic instrument or like a choir, for example. Uh, this, this is really nice when Melissa wants to be like a guitar, for example, that you have chords, more than one note at the same time. This way, Melissa can do a chord and uh, uh, be a singer doing a chord, which is quite unexpected. So it has a lot of different things. These are just, this is just a snippet of what it does. Now, all those whys that I was recording, um, let me trigger them for you. This is live looping, so I have a block of time, and within that time, I stack layers of my voice, and I put in a few effects, and then, and, um, and then I can mute them, bring them back in, and just like Charlie Parker elevated the saxophone to a whole new level, um, I remember asking myself, I mean, what can I do with live looping to elevate it to a different level in jazz? And one thing that popped into my mind was the use of polyrhythms. 
um, as blocks of time. Now, a polyrhythm is to divide an amount of time equally and then to juxtapose two different divisions. So here's one block of time at the top, and then I can divide it equally into four, six, eight, nine, for instance, and when I juxtapose two of them, that's the polyrhythm. And then when I isolate them, what I will do is I will change the tempo. So with the particular, with this song that we're going to play now, the tempo, the, the pulse will change because of these different blocks that have been divided differently. Um, the song is called Odd Times, and obviously because of the odd timing signature, and also it has a little message with it as well. So we're going, we're going to play that song now. feel diminished, changing and rearranging you, while it's somewhat deranged, but thinking to a strange person in the sky with all their bullshit, selling freedom for fire, leaders for liars, dancing and prancing all over people like the puppets be, oh, shout out all the words like they're falling from your tongue like gold, dripping, tripping, sliding, winding, tossing all the dreams and purpose off your palate, so cast your ballot, cause they're watching you, scrutinizing, patronizing and tantalizing you, to remind you that you're broken Don't let them make you feel ugly on the inside Do not remain silent In these hot times of tyrants Words are your microphone to take them from their throat The dirt at the end of the stairs and the lips of the dirt at the end of the stairs and the lips of the piano are quiet Fight the right to ignite Agility, flexibility, humility, sensibility Flipping, missing, dissing, reason, dropping, cursing Open season, heaven is begging for action And reaction be assert if that change is within you Cause history bleeds, actions without deeds History bleeds, actions without deeds We're the ones to make a change Thank you. So, um, how come we idolize Charlie Parker, someone that is as far removed from technology as a wallaby in a Portuguese zoo is from its natural habitat? Well, um, well, I'll give you the answer. Of course, Charlie Parker stood for the mission as an artist. He had the artistic attitude, the vision. Um, of course, Steve Jobs and Einstein, I mean, they contributed to the means that we have nowadays. Einstein rightfully explained relativity, and Steve Jobs contributed to a world of agglutination. And fruits of his labors can see in Jam's instrument that combines audio, visual, and lights, just like a cell phone can combine web browsing with texting, video gaming, and, and so many other possibilities. Yeah, also coming back to Einstein, he showed us that you can travel to the future if you go really, really, really fast, but you cannot travel to the past, or you cannot be stuck in a weird Tom Cruise time loop like Melissa does with, with her loops. So um, basically, if you idolize someone, if you like what they stand for, don't copy them. I mean, let's face it, if Charlie Parker were alive today, he would not be playing bebop. He would have found a way to relativize what he stood for, and he would have found a contemporary unexplored pathway. Thank you. Thank you. 